The state of affairs at Gwenlis is dire. With only two working days remaining, students will return to school next Monday to formally commence another academic year. The population, however, will be considerably smaller than previous enrollments. In fact, the overall register has shrunken to the point where there are roughly seven students per teacher, a ratio that is well below an acceptable average. Why is this such a precarious situation? It is quite simple. The more students signed up and attending classes, the more subvention the school is able to receive through the Ministry of Education. Since Gwen Lizaraga, like Edward P. York High School, is government funded, the onus is on the institution to grow its student body in order to benefit from the resources being made available. Lesser students attending simply means a smaller subsidy for the school. In this case, there are approximately 335 students and 44 teachers set for school on August 27th. The numbers are disparate when compared to EP York, which has a record of 637 students to 36 teachers. The way it is, first and second form students are given a $300 grant from government. As part of a finance reform carried out five or so years ago, schools receive an allotment out of which salaries are paid as well as day-to-day -day operations. For taking in students who perform poorly in the primary school exams, 60% or below, additional monies are awarded. Similarly, for students with low socioeconomic status, the school receives extra funds. There are also monies earmarked for initiatives to aid students in need of academic assistance. Together, they form the bulk of the school's resources. Put in perspective, this makes it clear what Gwenly stands to lose as a result of anemic enrollment. Aside from this dilemma, the school is also mired in political controversy of a partisan and non-partisan nature. First, there is the issue of Dr. Lorna McKay, who has been sidelined as principal over allegations of financial misappropriation. That matter is presently before the court. Then, there is the faculty and staff known for impromptu industrial action at the expense of students. Thirdly, is the composition of the board of directors. In the weeks following the March 7th municipal elections, there was an uproar over the availability of the councillor's seat on the board. That didn't bode well for the institution either. All these forces at work make it all the more difficult for Gwen Liz to attract new students to its classrooms. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Kayatano.